<laughs> we'll now move on to questions to the cabinet members will now take place. Question number 12, Councillor Carpenter. Question number 12 to the cabinet. I, I thank Councillor Carpenter for his question. As the answer sets out, for the last two financial years, there was an underspend in both cases, but in, but in both years, we met all the claims that were compliant with our policy. In the current financial year, I also expect there to be an underspend, uh, but there would not have been an, an underspend had the government changed its policy uh, on the uh, time scale that we originally uh, expected. For the recording. Supplementary. Uh, Thank you for that you. Uh, detailed response. I just want to make two, two, two points in, in response. Firstly, we shouldn't be underspending grants which are given to the government to, to help people who need, need, need welfare payment help. So clearly our policy is too restrictive at the moment. And secondly, you try in the answer to have your cake and eat it. On the one hand, you can't reduce the costs by 350,000 and then say, but everybody who, who needs this payment can get them anyway. You know? It's uh, a contradiction in terms. So we believe that there is headroom in this budget. The reduction in the uh, cap from 26,000 to 23,000 will cause a number of people, childless households, con considerable financial hardship and we believe that uh, you should rethink this policy. Second supplement. Thank you, sir. If I could just, just answer that before asking <laughs> Councillor Clay, I'm sure this is a very good point. I am a little bit surprised that Councillor Carpenter is normally reasonably uh, fiscally conservative, uh, at least, to suggest that we should just give money away. Uh, we should, uh, give, we should uh, award these payments in accordance with our policy, and that is exactly what we have done. If, we, if that happens to be underspent, then that money goes back to the central government to help to put against uh, their uh, enormous deficit, and that is a good thing. We should not just amend our policy our duly agreed policy uh, so we spend the government grant automatically that is perhaps one of the most fundamental differences between this side of the chamber and the other side of the chamber we believe in spending money properly and carefully secondly uh, uh, as we go forward again this has made very clear in a good dis discussion at the OSC on this this subject uh, the revised arrangements will enable us uh, we hope to fit within the budget uh, that is available we expect uh, that uh, the provisions we're putting in place will enable us to fit within the budget. This is not saying that, uh, that, no, that uh, whole legions of people are, uh, will not be getting money, but it is giving a clear priority to families, and I think that is the best thing to do. Councillor Clare. Uh, so, I'm sorry, sorry I jumped up. I didn't actually hear a question from Councillor Carpenter. It was more a statement. Um, and I thought um, I'd ask you the question that I asked, tried to, was going to ask Councillor Hogg earlier. Um, do you know this, this is how much it would cost to provide the extra it would cost to provide the London living wage for all staff working on the council social care contract? Well, on behalf, I would like to thank Council on behalf of Councillor Hogg. No, I, I don't know because we don't know the intricacies of, of the contract. It would clearly be a, a considerable sum of money, depending on, upon the particular details of the contract's concerns. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dunn, for, for the question. Um, yes, I, I, I do agree that uh, green gravel would be, uh, would be a very good idea. Uh, we pressed hard for it uh, to be the surface on the proposed new quiet way. Uh, not everyone in TfL, has to be said, thought it was a good idea, uh, so we just kept at it, and we finally got that agreement, which I'm pleased about, uh, because it looks good, uh, but it always has the important effect of slowing down cyclists because the surface is slightly loose, uh, and uh, it just uh, is better for everyone because uh, pedestrians and cyclists can therefore get along better. Supplementary. Councillor Dunn. Supplementary. Um, yes, with reference to Chestnut Avenue, um, can you explain where we are in terms of um, persuading TfL to also put green gravel down along Chestnut Avenue and also just give us an update on where we are with the trees? 
Thank you, Councillor Dunn, for the supplementary. Um, I, uh, as the answer says, I think, uh, I think Breen Gravel on Chestnut Avenue for exactly the same reasons as the Quiet Way would be a very good idea. Uh, it's a very important visual marker, Chestnut Avenue. Uh, we all know that. A uh, very special uh, place in the borough. There's nowhere quite like it. So I think it would be an enormous visual improvement, and I'm sure in the same way that the Breen Gravel has been welcomed by uh, most of the user groups uh, for the Quiet way uh, the same will be true for Chestnut Avenue so we're pressing TFL very hard and I was pleased to see uh, that the mayor has a very generous allocation for cycling uh, many tens of millions of pounds so I am sure that he would be able to uh, help us uh, help us uh, fund that. In fact, I think he should fund it in its totality. Uh, and so we'll, we'll be pressing him to do so. Uh, regarding the trees, uh, it's, it's a sad business, but we have looked at committee in very great detail at the issue, and we've reached a conclusion on the basis of uh, health and safety and the age of the trees, and I think, I think that is well known. Supplementary. Councillor Anderson, supplementary. Uh, thank you. Thank you for bringing up the trees as well. Um, I think we can all be agreed that breeding gravel, something we've had to learn something about um, un unusually, uh, is a good thing. I, and I also absolutely agree with um, TfL being pressed to provide the extra funding it would be needed to have two breeding gravel paths on um, Tooting Common so that you don't look like one is faster than the other. But I do hope that this is not a cop-out for the council and that you would consider the council funding this further down the line when it's passed through the Secretary of State. It will be quite a while. Um, but we won't just say it's TfL or nothing. So will you give me assurance that that other routes might be considered if TfL doesn't come up with the money, but I agree that it should. And in terms of the trees, do you know that a new report on the state of the trees of Chestnut Avenue has been produced by tree ex experts, by local groups, um, which deserves consideration? Have you heard about that report, and, and will you give it the consideration I think it needs? Well, I, uh, I thank, uh, I thank uh, Councillor Anderson for her, um, her supplementary question. Uh, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You get a debate about the budget uh, and uh, how disciplined they're going to be and what a mess we're making of it and how we can't do numbers and then suddenly an opportunity to spend money and uh, Councillor Anderson's there. Um, no, I think the Mayor should pay for this. Uh, he's got lots of cycling money and that's what we, we'll be pressing for. Uh, um, good elementary negotiating skills uh, tell you that, don't you? you don't, don't tell the people you're trying to persuade to pay for something. If pressed, we'll do it. Uh, so no, we won't. We want the, the Mayor to pay for it. Um, I don't really have much to add to the trees. I mean, if there is another report from another tree expert, of course we'll look at it. Um, we, uh, we're very, uh, very receptive to what any, anyone has got to say, but I can't see any of our conclusions changing. Uh, we've gone into it in great, great detail. Uh, committee has looked at it. Uh, an awful lot of office time has gone into it, and a lot of expert people have looked at it, so I can't see that changing. Councillor MacDonald. Question 14 to the Cabinet member, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor McDonnell for her, her question. Uh, when I uh, received it earlier this week, I have to say I was uh, extremely concerned when I saw the uh, words complaints about the health and safety of children, and I was then very surprised that it was the first I'd heard about it. So I rang the Director of Housing and Regeneration, and he was equally concerned that there were complaints about the health and safety of children. I'm equally surprised because it was the first he had heard about it as well. And indeed, I spoke to him uh, earlier this evening and asked if he received any complaints uh, since this answer was written, and he has not. So what I will say to Councillor MacDonald is clearly she has had complaints. Um, I really think she should answer why, if she has had complaints about the health and safety of children, she has not reported them or done anything about it. Surely that is the responsibility of all of us. I, frankly, I am appalled that somebody would wait for a council meeting to put a question where if they've genuinely had concerns from residents, they haven't done anything about it. Councillor MacDonald. Please. Um, so the complaints have been long running and we're very happy to pass them on. But it sort of feels to me um, unfortunate that we're having to pass them on. And ha could I just ask, have you been to talk to the residents yourself and find out what they think directly rather than having to take the information from us? Mr Mayor, I, I have to confess, I was rather expecting Councillor McDonnell to sort of say, well, actually, we haven't had any direct complaints at all. It's kind of, there could be complaints or something like that. But actually, she's actually admitted that she has complaints about the health and safety of children, and she has done nothing about it. Frankly, it is irresponsible and disgraceful, and she should be ashamed of herself. 
Second supplementary, please. Um, second supplementary. No, we've got a second supplementary. Oh, point, point yeah, personal to. explanation then. So will you, the complaints. Will you will you allow? Be well, can she speak? She has a question. Yeah. Okay. She must be given She's what? She must be given an opportunity. Okay. Yeah, do speak, uh, Councillor. This Montgomery. is a long-standing issue. It has actually come up at the housing committee as well, uh, and I think the residents turned up and weren't able to speak, as I am. Um, although I wasn't personally there, but I did hear about that, which is very unfortunate. Can I just move on to the next point? So it does say in your answer, and I'll ask yeah, no, a question. We've had a, we've Can had I ask a, a second question? Okay. Made the point. Thank you. Second supplement. Supplementary. Second supplementary, Councillor McDermott. Thank, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, can the Cabinet member understand that we Nightingale councillors are absolutely fed up with councillors from far-flung wards coming and interfering and getting involved in issues in our ward, of which we are well aware of? And um, only this afternoon, I was at Nightingale Square with the Director of, of uh, Community Services and the manager there, and do you know how many issues are raised? Absolutely none. We are very much in touch with our residents in Nightingale Square, both in the, the square itself and in the hostel. And um, does he agree that there are plenty of safe and grassy areas within a stone's throw of the Nightingale Hostel, which are just fabulous places for children to play? They're not unsafe. They're playgrounds which are well looked after. There's fabulous expanses of Wandsworth Common. Is that not a good place for children to play? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I, just to answer Councillor uh, Macdonald's intervention, she does seem to think that complaints about health and safety of children are not important. Oh, well, there have been long-standing complaints. Let's have them. We haven't received them. She has made an allegation in the question about health and safety of children. Surely, as corporate parents, the entire council should have a view on this and be concerned about it. Only today, in all our pigeonholes, there's, a, there's a, an invitation to come to a corporate parenting evening. That's what we are, and that's what we are here for. To take uh, Councillor... Uh, uh, move now on to, to Councillor... Uh, uh, McDermott's point. Yes, indeed, of course, ward councillors spend a lot of time there. I was, I was there myself yesterday. Uh, I don't know when Councillor Macdonald was there. She wouldn't have seen the dilapidated fencing she's talking about because it isn't there. Uh, there's no dilapidated fencing. It's complete and utter nonsense. Um, I, I really is surprising that uh, there's so few issues in, in Graveney Ward that it requires intervention in everybody else's, particularly with all these daily returns, uh, trips uh, about, about flight tips that we keep getting as well. How do they find the time? They're marvellous to, marvellous to us all. Thank you. Councillor Humphreys. Question 15 to the Cabinet Member. I thank the Councillor for his question. Um, yes, I have looked at the impacts in Wandsworth and I do have concerns about the effect of the revaluations on our businesses. Clearly the fact that many of our smaller businesses now fall outside rates altogether is great news, but there are still many losers. And that's why I very much welcome the Chancellor's efforts in the budget today to alleviate the position of businesses facing large increases. Yeah. Um, he also addresses several of our key concerns, uh, saying he wants the system to be fairer and highlighting that that also includes online businesses. We identified pubs as some of the businesses with the largest increases and there will now be a £1,000 discount on rates bills for pubs with an RV of less than £100,000. The so-called cliff edge effect, which we also had concerns over, will be alleviated with an extra cap of £50 a month on businesses coming out of small business rates relief. And there will be a £300 million fund for councils to provide discretionary relief. Um, the, government going, the government are going to set out plans to make the system fairer before the next revaluation, and I would welcome that and look forward to contributing our views. Second okay. Councillor Humphreys. I uh, thank the Cabinet Member for our answer, um, and particularly in her written answer, besides all the good news she's told us about um, the fact that we want to focus on the success of all our businesses in the borough and encourage government to do everything we can to make sure that that happens for small and big businesses across the borough. Um, I'd want to ask a, a slightly different supplementary, though, about, um, if she could give you some information about the impact this business rates change will have on the schools in our borough, because that's obviously something people are concerned about too. Yeah, well, I obviously would be concerned um, that a business rates revaluation exercise uh, could lead to a decrease in the amount of funding for direct expenditure on pupils. Um, we've actually worked out that under the current rules, net of transitional relief, the effect would be a decrease of about £182,000 across the whole budget, or about £10 per pupil. 
The Chancellor did announce today that he wants the system to be fairer and that it will be looked at before the next revaluation. And I do hope that that will include looking at how schools should be dealt with so that pupils aren't penalised by changes. But I would emphasise that the current changes will not have a huge effect in Wandsworth. Second supplementary. Supplementary. Thank you. Grimston, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, has the Cabinet member looked really carefully into this school's issue? Because the information I have from the Director of Finance is that this is very heavily skewed. Of the 26 primary schools that Wandsworth maintains, the actual loss uh, after damping will be something of the order of 411,000, which is an increase in the rate of about 40%. But of course the overall figure for the borough is skewed because academies will uh, benefit from the 80% decrease, uh, from the 80% rebate as charities, uh, and therefore many of those will be not affected. But it will be the local authority schools which are very, very heavily uh, affected. And 411,000 on top of what we're looking at the proposed cuts from the Education Secretary is a very large amount of money to spread over a very small amount of schools. Uh, quite patently, this seems to me it's probably another way of forcing schools unwillingly to become academies which don't wish to be, be so. But will the Cabinet Member guarantee to the Chamber that she will fight just as hard for the uh, local authority schools which are very heavily hit by this as she will for the rest of our schools which fortunately are protected by uh, different legislation which, uh, 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 which uh, keeps them from some of the more severe effects of the change. Um, I thank the councillor for his supplementary. Um, I think the 411 figure that you're referring to is before transitional relief. So I think once the transitional relief has been applied, actually that goes down to the 182,000. Um, <coughs> and, and, and when I was talking about the um, cost per pupil, I just used um, the number of pupils that are in our... Um, community-based system so it, it comes out about £10 uh, per pupil um, but absolutely I would say that I would absolutely fight as hard for our community schools and, and absolutely wouldn't want it to have an effect on them it won't have an effect on individual schools because the whole um, the whole amount will be applied against the whole of the DSG so essentially individual schools won't have to worry about budgeting for the for the business rates increase but it will have an effect on our schools budgets okay thanks Thank you. Councillor Ambash. Question 16 to Councillor Tracy. Um, I thank the uh, Councillor for the question um, and um, it is as my answer there. I really don't think that um, uh, a council meeting will add anything extra that is required for our response. Yep. Councillor Ambash. Yep. In view of Councillor Tracy's answer saying that we'll have time to discuss this tonight, and that being very unlikely with the detour we've had with all the adjournments, and that I wonder if she might like to reconsider her answer. Particularly, I'd like to say that the new funding formula for schools may have profound effects on children and schools, and your answer means you avoid any scrutiny of our detailed response as a council to government by democratically elected OSCs and executives. So, do you not accept that you should be accountable and held accountable for this response by the Council's committees? Thank the Councillor for his supplementary and um, as is usual with consultations it will be shared with Councillor Ambash and he will have the opportunity to um, uh, comment on it um, and I, I don't honestly believe the opposition would will be disagreeing too much with what I expect to be a very robust response to the consultation. Second supplemental. Councillor Peterkin. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Matt, does the council member share my disappointment, although not surprised, that yet again the opposition spokesman for children's services has decided to pursue a very sensitive issue, um, not via the committee system, but via the pages of the local press, regardless of the worry and concern that, that, that his ham-fisted and misleading interventions caused to local parents? I thank the councillor um, for his uh, uh, supplementary. It takes me back actually to the um, elections in the 1980s when the, the only way the Labour Party could fight uh, elections was by falsehoods and exaggerations and one of the recurring fees was we were going to um, cut the bus pass and things like that. I think it's disgraceful the way uh, the councillor has behaved in the press on two occasions and this is one of them. Councillor Strickland. Uh, 
I, I thank uh, Councillor Strickland for, for this question. A, a hugely important issue and something that really is uh, a little bit troubling. Uh, we've got um, some very real concerns around this major uh, reorganisation of the um, police uh, uh, command unit structure across the city. Uh, the proposal is that we would be the only combination of four. There being a number of combinations of three and some of two, but no other combination of four. Uh, and while we obviously know a lot about joining uh, the, the operations of two councils together, uh, and so we don't object to the principle, uh, we also know an awful lot about the pitfalls, and, uh, and it's with that knowledge that we really think this is too big. Uh, I've had the opportunity uh, with the leader to meet the Deputy Mayor for Policing and Crime. Uh, I've met a couple of times with her in the last, last two weeks. She's well aware of our concerns. Uh, and we should be keeping a very close eye on it. There's a little bit more detail here on exactly uh, what we're worried about. Councillor Strickland. I thank Councillor Strickland for, for the supplementary. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's our paramount concern is, is, is what do our residents think about it? How do they feel? Do they feel safe? That's got to be the most important thing. Uh, we had our community safety partnership meeting uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, and one of, the, uh, one of the points I raised there was uh, the, would we get the same level of attention uh, from senior officers uh, as a result of these changes? I fear we won't. Uh, safer neighborhood board, the same. Safeguarding, incredibly important. Uh, ditto. So these are things we will be keeping very, very close eyes on. As I said, the combination of four, the, uh, the danger that the senior police leadership becomes very distant from this borough is, is, a, is a real one. Supplementary. Supplementary, Dawson. Oh, Councillor Dawson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I like that again, these. The, the, the You've got malfunctional all over the place. Maybe that's why we have a maintenance reserve for renewal for equipment. <laughs> um, right. Okay. Supplementary question. Um, as well as the proposals in relation to the borough command, um, does the cabinet member also share my concern of the proposed cutting of uh, reductions in the um, mayor's grants uh, to the community safety operation of this borough? And does he agree that these reckless actions of the uh, mayor present a real and potentially present danger to the residents of this borough? Uh, well, I, I, th I thank Councillor Dawson for, for raising this. Uh, there are really three very, very big concerns on the policing front at the moment. There, there is the, uh, we've just talked about the, uh, the amalgamation. Uh, the, uh, the cut, the swinging cut is the only, the only description that's appropriate to uh, our allocation of the London Crime Prevention Fund. We spoke about it a couple of council meetings ago. Uh, it does look as though it will be forced upon us. Um, it. It really is quite extraordinary. Uh, our grant will go from £800,000 to about four hundred thousand pounds we will do our best to cope with it but there is no way that we can continue to do all the important prevention work uh, and diversionary work which everybody agrees is so important far far better to prevent crime than react to it once it's happened uh, so I as I said I've met the deputy mayor for crime uh, for, for crime <laughs> for policing um, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll become that uh, and uh, I can't say uh, I can't say I got very far uh, and I wrote uh, this morning to our assembly member uh, reporting on that meeting and it was essentially very unsatisfactory and interesting to note that uh, it's not just myself as a representative of a conservative borough who was most unhappy with the uh, performance of the uh, of the deputy mayor it was everybody who was represented at the meeting that I was at uh, Labour, Lib Dem, whatever everybody who spoke was most unhappy so I, I will really be urging uh, our assembly member to follow through on the commitments that she gave us uh, towards the end of last year in this chamber that she'd do everything she could uh, to fight for our allocation because 51% is a ridiculous cut for anyone to, uh, to have to contemplate. I'd also just like to quickly mention another broken promise that I've been reminded of uh, by, by the Mayor. Um, he has stripped out £38 million from the staffing budget uh, of, uh, of policing, which now makes it impossible 
impossible for him to meet his own policing targets, which are in his strategy document of 32,000 policemen, which is incredible, isn't it? So that's another broken promise we can add to the list. Thank you. Time is up for Mi questions to Mr. cabinet Mr. members. Mr. Mayor, can I do a point of personal explanation? Because I did just, and you also did take two supplementaries from the same side, which is that I just wanted to set, and I think it's a shame that we're talking about cuts in the budget when the, but when the uh, amount that's coming from the government has gone down by 750 million. But I just wanted to um, assure the cabinet member that I will be picking up these issues alongside him as we discussed yesterday at, at Mayor, and is after the, the, the... It is. Uh, yes, because... No, not really. I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone other than myself. Thank you very much, Councillor Dawson. Uh, and I will con continue to pick up these issues with Councillor Peck, who leads on this for London councils. It's an issue of concern across London and also with the Deputy Mayor Direct alongside you and the Leader. Thank you. We'll now move on Mr. to... Mayor, uh, sorry. We now return on briefly the point to... Sorry, sorry, on the point Johnson. of order, Mr Mayor, I have raised this before, but it is something that concerns me. It is a long-standing tradition, certainly in the Chamber, that when a supplementary question is asked by one party within the Chamber, the second supplementary should be asked by, the, by, by uh, another party, now that there's three of us. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually written into the standing orders. My view is that if it's not, it should be. But I do think uh, it's unfortunate that we've drifted so far away from that tradition over the course of the last year. It's clearly something more for your predecessor than yourself, Mr. Mayor. But I would uh, just like to make a marker that I believe that my understanding is that within the orders, certainly as we've practiced them, uh, the supplementary question should be available to more than just uh, a single party. Thank, Thank you. Noted. Thank you very much.